Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. First, a shout out to Fulci Fan. Got you, bud. There's a t-shirt. Anyway, this episode, we're going to be doing a quick rehousing featuring my Orphanicus philippinus. This is one of the slings that I produced back in 2019. She is outgrown. Well, I hope it's she has outgrown her enclosure. It's time to get her into something a little bit bigger. I have another one that I've also kept that I'm hoping to get into a new enclosure, but we're not going to tape that one. We don't need to overdo it. So anyway, for those of you who've been asking for an update on these guys, and for those of you that purchased some of the slings that I raised, here we go. So enough of me talking. Let's check out my Orphanacus philippinus or Philippine tangerine tarantula. All right, we're about to rehouse one of my O. philippinus. These are the, well, they were the slings that I produced for my female. We bred her back in July of 2019. I think these guys were born or hatched around September of 2019. And the babies were sold from through Fear Not Tarantulas. So if you bought one of those that you knew were my slings, this, these are mine because I've had several people ask me how mine are doing. They're growing fairly slowly overall considering it was back in 2019 they were born. It's been like two years. And I did get a peek of mine the other day. They've been burrowing. And as you can see there, it's got some, it's way too big for that enclosure in there. They're also a beautiful, vibrant orange. So what we're going to do is get them out of this, which I believe is one of the four by four by what, like five and a half, Amac boxes. This I put them in here when they were about an inch or so, and now they've definitely outgrown it. What we've got here is one of the M Design stackable closet plastic storage box for women's high heels. I think that's the full description for it. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up beforehand. This is why when people ask me what it is, I don't like to say it. Um, but this one's about about roughly 12 inches by seven and a half inches or so by seven and a half inches deep. I like these for any of the juvenile species I keep, especially fossorial ones, because it does allow for several inches of dirt. The substrate is the Biodeuterra arania. We have a cork bark hide here, half around, which I've stuffed with a bit. I've mentioned this before in the past, but when you're giving them a starter burrow, if I just give them this big hole burrow here, the spider is fairly small compared to that. It's not going to feel very secure. However, if I make a little hole in here and fill it with a little sphagnum moss, it's going to go in behind the sphagnum moss. It's going to feel more secluded and secure. We have a few different types of moss. We have some New Zealand moss. This is the new moss that I'm using. I picked up on Amazon. I really like, and I believe this might be some, what is it, Zoomet or uh, Exoterra moss. I forget. It's one of the name brand ones. I don't particularly care for it. And then we have some leaf litter, and there'll be a water dish in here afterwards. But this is a fossorial species, so we will expect her to dig down to the bottom, probably go through here, dig, create a little burrow. And this is one I've had people tell me they've set them up arboreally. I have not, I have not heard of them being arboreal or even semi-arboreal, and I will say that I've kept several of them and mine have not shown any of those tendencies. However, if you're one of the ones that has seen a spider that has those semi-arboreal tendencies, please chime in. All right, so I think what we're going to do here is we have, this could be convenient where if we tip her over and poke her from this end, she should shoot out this end. Shoot out probably not being the best choice of words. Yeah, let's hope she does not do that. I'm going to use the... Mm. All right, well, I don't know if you can get a shot of her. I don't know if she's showing up. She's that showing up. orange is just stunning. And again, as she goes back in, this is why I don't, you know, with the YouTube videos, I spend more time on just trying to get them in. Um, this obviously has been kind of my, when I first started the Tom's Big Spider website, and it started getting some, some traffic. I was looking for a spider to feature on the banner, and I picked O. philippinus because I love the color orange. Let's close that up. You just go out here. No, no, no. There we go. No, no, no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use the, the other end here. Stop. Stop. Oh my lord. Easily one of my favorite spiders. And I was, okay, so I'm full disclosure. I originally had more of the New Zealand sphagnum moss. I had set this one up a while ago, and I switched it to that green because I was really hoping to get a shot of her on the green. And there she is. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to go ahead and do the 
screw it up. There we go. Just beautiful. And I will say, as they get older, that orange gets less intense. It'll be fairly intense after a molt, but my old, older female, it was definitely an orange hue to her, but it was starting to kind of tan out a bit. So there she is. Now this is a fossorial species. This is a moisture dependent species, species. So the key to that is always lots of substrate and moist substrate. Remember the top can dry out a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around. So hopefully we can see the side here. You can see some of this is dried out. And what I do is the bottom is moist. I'm gonna add more water. This one, I actually set this enclosure up a couple weeks ago, actually several months ago now I think of it. But we want the bottom layers to stay moist. The top can dry out a bit. What I will do afterwards is pour water down so it goes down the side and soaks into here. But when keeping the moisture dependent species, recognize that the top doesn't need to stay moist all the time. I think that's the biggest mistake people make when they end up with really overly damp enclosures is they freak out when the top starts to dry out. But bottom line, if they can burrow and get to that moist substrate, that's going to keep their book lungs nice and moist. They'll have no problems there and the top can dry out, which will keep you from getting mold and such. But I did a, I'm not going to go totally into depth on husbandry for these guys because I did a whole, like one of my special videos on them that focused on the husbandry because I have raised a couple generations of them. And I will put a clip for that at the end of the video so that people that want to get the full husbandry on them, the full, even the full history of these guys, I'll flash up some of the, the pictures of them as slings, but they can go to that video. So there we go for people who've been asking. That's my Orphanacus philippines. We'll see if we can get another. Uh, don't get too, too close, but Orphanacus philippinus, the Philippine tangerine. Easily one of my favorite species. And if you're wondering why most of the Tom's Big Spiders logos I use are orange, it's because of this spider right here. So again, the key with this species is always to give it adequate substrate to burrow in. They are a fossorial species and they do like it moist. So you wanna make sure that you provide enough of that deep moist substrate for it to be happy and healthy. Overall, the growth rate has been a little slower this time around, but they're beautiful spiders. And once they get that orange coloration, I think most people understand why these guys are so highly sought after in the hobby. And of course, you will continue to see the orange Tom's Big Spiders logo because it was inspired by this tarantula because hey, I love the color orange. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate, click the little circle up in there. If you wanna check out my full husbandry video on this species, you will find it right here. And if you'd like to check out another random video, it'll be down there. As always, if you take the time to comment, I will respond. Just know it can take me a couple days. You guys stay safe out there. We'll catch you all next time.